So with that framework in mind, we can look at these data and we can start thinking about what the marginal death rate is gonna be in these different treatment arms. So in the, in the, in the treatment arm, right, subject C is the only patient who dies. At that point, there are three patients exposed to death, right, because one of the patients was already censored. Subject D was already censored. So we'll see a spike in the marginal death rate for the treatment arm at, uh, it'll be about one over three. Placebo, first person who dies, it's gonna be a lower marginal death rate, 25%, one over four. The second one will be one over three, 33%. We can plot this and it's exactly like what we expected, right? We have two spikes in the placebo arm, one spike in the treatment arm. The top panel is our marginal death rate in each of these different periods, relatively straightforward to calculate. What's really powerful is this bottom panel, this cumulative survival over all of these different periods. And it turns out this is really easy to calculate because all you have to do is multiply through each of these points in your marginal death rate, right? So what's great about this is that this cumulative survival gives us these retention curves that we need. And it's computationally simple, right? Pulled this off of Wikipedia, it might impress your boss, but it's actually really straightforward. What's going on here is we're just trying to figure out the number of people who died among those who could have died, and then we're taking the cumulative probability over all the time periods. So, talked about theory a little bit. How do we use this for our business? How can we use this for subscriptions? How can we use this for retention? How can we use this for all of these other things that we might wanna do? So, the main difference is that our data doesn't look like the clinical trial data, right? In the clinical trial data, you have all of your patients sort of start this trial on the same date, it's January 1st or whatever, and then it goes for three years. Ours is sort of exactly the opposite of it. We have a whole bunch of data from a whole bunch of different points in time. Patients or um, customers are starting subscriptions at a whole bunch of different times. And what we need to do is we need to sort of get these data into the right formats so that we, we can apply Kaplan-Meier to understand our retention. So pretty straightforward. All that we do is we sort of slide everything to the left, call that day zero. Any customers who haven't unsubscribed as of today, they're censored. We don't know what's gonna happen to them. They might continue on their subscription for many years, they might unsubscribe tomorrow, but it's exactly the same idea as those clinical trial patients who were lost to follow up. So this is the technique that we use, and then boom, this maps directly on to what we wanna do, which is calculate the marginal churn rate and the cumulative retention for any group of, cu of customers who are interested in. What's even niftier is that on your x-axis, it doesn't have to be time periods, right? You can use this idea of cumulative probabilities for a whole bunch of different things. What's actually interesting to us is how many subscription orders do they complete before they unsubscribe, right? For us uh, at Harry's, you can be on subscriptions at a whole bunch of different cadences. Maybe you get a box every 60 days. Maybe you get a box every 120 days. Maybe you get a box every 150 days. Maybe every third box you delay an extra 45 days for whatever reason, because that's what you want to do. Totally fine with us. But then if you sort of are looking at month by month, your retention numbers are going to be a little wonky. So we can use this exact same technique, but abstracting totally away from calendar time, which is really powerful for us. It's also computationally simple. Um, you don't have to do this like crazy big join to figure out like one row per user per week if you wanna analyze that. All you need is you need to know, have one row per user, you need to know their observation length, and then you need to know whether or not they had the event. So whether they had the event or they were censored. Once you're at this point with some relatively straightforward window functions. You can calculate all of your marginal probabilities at all of these periods, and then you're basically done. You can do it in SQL, right? Cumulative probability, um, for those of you, depending on what flavor of SQL you're working in, if you exponentiate the sum of the natural logarithm, that will give you your cumulative probability. If you show this off to your engineering team, I guarantee you they will think you are very clever, even if it's a little bit of a hack, but you can make this work. That's the really nice thing about this trick. Um, and we've made it work for a bunch of different use cases. So, bringing it all home. How does basket size impact retention? How does the choice of what we default people into for these subscriptions impact how long they stay with us as customers? We built this into Looker, right? So we're doing Kaplan-Meier all the time here in Looker. Here's the visualization, um, I sort of, obfuscated the y-axis and truncated it, so the data are a little bit hard to interpret, but we should be able to see the patterns here. 
This is sort of grouped by quarter of start, I think, from 2015. We've got three quarters, um, retention's relatively consistent across these shape plans. We get a little bit better every quarter, which is great, but not a lot of exciting stuff here. What we were able to do is we were able to also pivot this by what basket they started out on. And here the pattern starts to get interesting, and this is where this technique becomes really powerful. So the topmost line, blades only, we default them into blades only plan. The middle line, blades and shave cream. The bottom line, blades gel and post shave balm. So there are differences here. There are sort of fairly dramatic differences in the retention rates across these different starting baskets. What's great about this is that we can sort of read off the y-axis, the cumulative share of people still on a shave plan or on a subscription after some number of orders, and it'll tell you exactly what that percentage is, and we can plug that right into a business case model and figure out what is actually long-term most profitable for our company. So not only is it sort of visually appealing and really obvious what the pattern here is, it's also great from a business use case because, or for business users, because they can plug it right into the models that they're already working with. It's really easy for people to reason about. Most importantly, this should not be only for scientists, right? When I learned Kaplan-Meier, I was using Stata, I was using SAS, I used it in R, I used it in Python, I see people nodding their heads. Um, those are great packages, those are the great, great tools for doing this analysis, but this technique isn't that hard. It's not that confusing, right? Business users can understand it. So what we should be thinking about doing, and now that we have tools like Looker, we can really think about doing it a lot more, is how can we take the statistical and probabilistic techniques and build them into our tools and give them to our users, right? We can do it with SQL. SQL is really powerful. It's Turing complete, um, as we were talking about this morning. There's a lot of stuff that we can do, and our business users are smart. They get a lot of this stuff. So what's really cool about this technique for me is that we have tons of business users all across our company who are doing fairly sophisticated Kaplan-Meier analysis every day, and they don't know it. They don't know what Kaplan-Meier is, never heard the term before, doesn't matter to them. They understand retention, but that's what they're getting, and it's performant, right? All of these things are very snappy because we don't have to do this giant fan-out join in order to actually figure out what's going on. So that's all that I have for you guys today. Um, email me if you guys have any questions or want to talk about this stuff.